Hey guys. Today we are here at the Mission San Francisco de la Tejas. In other words, the Mission Tejas State Park. And this is a marker. It was founded near this marker in 1690. Now here they've got some boards and it gives you a little bit at any time you can stop the video and read. Sorry about all the background noise. A lot of the pictures are faded. I'm gonna get what I can here for you. Like I said, at any point in time, you can stop the video and read. Sorry about that. There's a bee. Have to watch out for the bees. Very sorry.
And then here we've got, looks like, um, time of deaths for people. I'll spare you all that. This is art in the park. That's kind of neat. Some very talented kids. Here we've got a library. And I don't see anywhere where you check it out or nothing, but I'd say maybe like you, um, you can check out the books, take them down to the ranger office and sign your name or whatever. That's pretty cool. Let me show you this over here. I'm assuming more or less this is a replica of the mission because I understand that the original mission had been torn down. Now look here. They used a tomahawk <laughs> or a hatchet. <laughs> We've got the Texas Star here on the walk. A guest book that you get to sign in. So this would have been like what the mission would look like. Yeah, it showed that um, like if there was anybody sick, they would lay them down. So I can imagine like Maybe like here in the corners, they would lay them and tend to them and whatnot. I don't know that this was the real mission. I don't believe it was. I think and this was put up to represent that they've got a memorial out here or a plaque rather so let's go out here and look Spanish mission faced with a French entry into East Texas in the 1600s Spain asserted its claim by founding a mission in 1690 Spain sent Franciscan Franciscan friars to found mission San Francisco de la Teja thought to be thought to lie just rest of Mission Tejas State Park. The Spanish friars attempted to convert the native Hassani Keto to Christianity while making them subjects of the Spanish crown. Conflict arose when native people blamed diseased outbreaks on the baptismal waters and the Spaniards accused them of theft. The Spanish abandoned the mission in 64. A park for remembrance. In preparation for the 1936 Texas Centennial, 
Houston County leaders who founded the park viewed the present park site as the likely location of East Texas East Texas with an apostrophe S first mission and pushed for its recognition, recognition beginning in 1934. They erected a commemorative plaque, acquired this very land, and worked with the Texas Forest Service to let it, to set it aside in honor of the mission. Civilian Conservation Corps Company 888 finished building the park in May of 1935. So this is a decently old park. It's very well kept. The bathrooms are nice and clean. Very well kept. The Path of Redemption. Building new lives, reclaiming the land. So over there is some more bathrooms and I think showers as well. Uh, there's a trail right here. So, I will get back with you as soon as I hit a trail. Okay, so we're going to be starting here at the Riches Run. Riches Run, which goes up this way. I have got a colored map. I've already mapped my way. So, I know basically of where I'm wanting to go. And... Also, what has been known or said is that apparently um, Davy Crockett had uh, come through this area when he was on his way to um, uh, to San Antonio to fight at the Alamo. So, um, it's quite a way. Uh, like, we are here in Grapeland, and, um, okay, so we keep a watch for the ribbons. Got it. They've got it marked. Awesome. Anyway, um, yeah, because, uh, there's private residency. Anyway, so, like, from where we live to here was around two and a half hours. And from where we live to San Antonio to the Alamo is, like, two and a half hours. So imagine doing a five, doing a five hour run on horseback and just from this point, not including entirely where he came from. So that was some traveling. And of course, he was going through uh, Indian territory. And then as he got closer to the mission in San Antonio, um, we're running into the uh, um, the Spanish army uh can't even think of <laughs> of the name now but anyway you know so yeah he uh ran into some pretty rough things running through Texas um, but nonetheless you know so anyway as you can see this is completely different 
from what you're used to seeing. This had burned. This had caught fire. But there's a lot of pine here and other stuff. This isn't like the forest that I've took you through closer around my area toward the western side of Texas. This is east of t east of Texas and um, the forestry is a lot different. There are pine and other type trees, dogwoods and stuff. Not the not all the cypress and juniper trees that you're used to seeing. You can see that the terrain is different. It's smooth. And um, so, yeah, different beauty here. And um, I am more than happy to give this to you. Now, my God has been faithful to really look out for me on these hikes. Now, the skies aren't clear and blue. It is rainy. But the temperature is comfortable. And I can certainly appreciate that because I don't want to freeze. So, God is good. Anyway, when I come up to a POI, I will show it off to you. So, be watching. Yeah, you can see I'm in a raincoat. I'm prepared. Anyway, I remembered the name. Santa Ana. As he got closer to the mission in San Antonio, the Alamo mission, he was running into Santa Ana's troops. I knew it'd come to me. Anyway, I'll get back with you as soon as I find something. I just want you to look at this land. It's a beautiful slope down in there. It's just, this terrain is different and it's really gorgeous. And yeah, it's nice being able to walk on different land. Don't get me wrong, I love the parks that I've got closer around, but this is nice. Look at the stones. Now just imagine Davy Crockett going through these areas. Anyway, I'll get back with you in a little bit. Now we are on the Hardwood Trail. And, um... As you notice, there are a bunch of fallen leaves. Unfortunately, because it's raining, the leaves are red, so there's no crunching underneath my feet. Which I greatly enjoy the sound of, but... Unfortunately. Anyway, yes. We have got beautiful fall colors here. Beautiful fall colors. And they've not all completely gone dead. So, I just wanted to point that out. And I'll get right back with you. Here's a marker. The Olkin, Ol the Olsen Ridges Formation. Anyway, the terrain changes, and I do believe that. Okay, you can stop the video, enlarge the screen, whatever you need to do. And I'll get right back at you. So I'm going to be trying not to shoot too awful much because of the rain. Just for my phone. So I'll get back at you. Okay. We are on a house seat. There used to be swings right there. Here's an old chimney. A fireplace.
I gather it was a very small house. A very small house. I wonder if it had burnt down to the ground or something. There's some stones there. It wouldn't have been a very big house at all. I'm curious as to what's over here. I don't know what, maybe the stones was part of its uh, structure. You know, they just put it up. Alright, that's just a log. And a little bit of metal there. Uh, shards. So I take it maybe this place had burnt down. And the chimney, the chimney doesn't look like it was ever phased at all. But, yeah, it had to have been a very small house. Now over here, they've got it. So, if you've been hiking for a little while, from either direction, you've got some benches to sit. Now they had set up one of those spinners for you to walk through, but it's not necessary. Anyway, you've got benches to rest. We are on the chimney loop. And, um, We're going to go on ahead and continue. That is very interesting. I wonder how long that's been down. The trees are a little on the older side, so I don't know, maybe around 25 years ago or so. Anyway, let's go on ahead and move it on. Here we've come to a really beautiful pond, perhaps a wash, and um, there's a parking lot down there, so I'm not going to proceed on down, but there's that. I'm going to take you to another place. Okay, here we're at a rest area, and there is no outlet. They provide you a bench, but you do get a very good look of a great beautiful forestry I know I'm zooming a little fast for you um, I do want to mention I had forgot you can get an annual pass and it's only $70 and they give you a card and it is good at any state park for a year it's good for a year at any state park for just seventy dollars so that's a pretty good deal there are tons of state parks here in texas so for seventy bucks a year pass any state park here yeah good deal so um if you're one of those you like to go to the state parks Check and see, wherever, whatever state you live in, check and see if you can get an annual pass. And uh, it might pay off for you in the long run. So anyway, I'll get back with you when I have more things to show you. Okay, I have come to a bridge. I'm going to be careful how I step. 
They're oil treated to keep them from rotting. This is a very narrow bridge. Now, if this is Cemetery Hill Trail, and I don't know if it means because there's a cemetery, I reckon there would be, saying that it's named that. But also, there's supposed to be some bathtubs, which, um, of course, probably is just some pools or something, you know, miniature pools. So anyway, um, I will get back with you. It's a little dry right now. Here's the bath tubs. You know, I could almost see if they were full. And someone just kind of sit down in them. Yeah, I could see that. I could, I could see that. Yeah. A purpose lost in time. Huh. I took yins to Claiborne. Res in the opposite direction. Not anywhere near here. Spring fed poles. Cool. Okay. This is what they call the oldest, tallest uh, century tree. It's a pine tree. And it just keeps on going up and up and up and up. And like right up there, can't hardly stretch to get it. Ugh. This does happen to be the biggest tree here that I could see. I mean, it really doesn't do justice. Let me get up closer to it. Like it is big, seriously big. It's hard to tell how old. And there's other old trees here, like over there is a tall old one but that's not that's not a pine but there are lots of old trees here and they're big a lot of them but this is the biggest one right here and there's a mark on it so yeah wow all right This trail overall has been very easy to hike. Um, it's not too uh, mountainous or anything. There are some slopes, but they're not hard. Uh, they get taking your breath after a while, but it's not like you're really having to work hard to hike them. It's just that they continue to slope up a little way. But on the whole part, these trails are not difficult. Um, and there's more trails to this park than that, than what I've been on. There's at least like uh, maybe three other trails or so. I'm not going to be able to hike all of them, but if you're interested, 
This is the Mission Teja State Park in Grapeland, Texas. Grape Land, Texas. And um, I don't, there is an admission. I don't know how much it charges. Just if you want to see it for a day. If you don't want to pay the $70 for an annual pass, I don't know. But um, there is a fee. Probably no more than $5 per person. And um, it does have a lot of interesting things to see. I'm going to go on ahead and let you go. There is a home place that I'm going to be filming for you as well. And I will add this in this footage. I'll add it in this video. But other than that, I'm going to say, I'm going to say bye. And you all have a great day. Now we are here at the Rice home. Now this is a very old log cabin. And as you can see, it's pretty big too. So let's go on ahead and kind of take a tour of the seats here. Apparently they maybe do a talk on it or something because there's a bunch of benchings. Over here, oh boy, they rode in style. This wasn't no regular covered wagon. This was a fancy fancy ragged. Look at that. That is a really cool ragged. And look how small. I don't remember what they called these on Little House on the Prairie, but I think often of the show when I see these old things. Michael Landon done a good job trying his best to make it look as real and authentic as possible. There definitely wasn't any room for the feet. Not really. Okay, let's go on ahead and look inside of this place. They provided a ramp, which is nice. Oh, they had steps, too. I should have took the steps. My bad. Okay. The for first room. Huh. Possibly was used as a schoolhouse. Maybe. Trying to make sure to get pictures. But do not enter. Probably because it wouldn't be safe up there. Huh. Look. It doesn't, it doesn't go anywhere anyway. Does it go anywhere anyway? Hmm. Unless they bricked that in later. I'd say that's what they done. They bricked that in. very thin glass. Mm, yeah, okay, so look, it was the upstairs for like the children.
Perhaps this was the sitting room. It was kind of odd how they made these homes. It was really odd. I think about the yearling. That's a very short doorway. But I do, I think about the yearling and the way that house was situated, the way they made it. Now, they had said not to touch the wallpaper, that the wallpaper was falling apart, but, well, maybe there was wallpaper. And they ran on ahead and took it down, maybe. You know, though, even now, I can imagine if the fireplace was used. And look how clean the fireplace is. There's no set on the back of the wall or anything. But this was a home. And I can imagine with the doors closed and a fireplace lit in every room that I showed you, that it would still be somewhat warm. Somewhat. You'd have to, of course, wear something, but I could imagine it'd still be warm. Let's go over here and look at what this is. Oh, okay. Ah, oh, look. The Rice Family Log Home. Joseph Rice and his wife really came to Texas from Tennessee in 1828 and built their log home by 1838. Rice prospered as a farmer, growing cotton and corn and raising livestock. The Rices had 11 children, six of whom were probably born in the log home. Uh, yeah, I believe that. Joseph's wife's home served as a stopover for travelers on the old San Antonio Road, an important thoroughfare across early Texas. From, from 1690 to 1820, the road linked Spain settlements in East Texas with Mexico during the first half of the 1800s. Americans used the road to enter and travel through Texas. There's the San Antonio Road, Natchitoches, Natchitoches, Gaines Ferry, Crockett, which is really where we are. We're in Crockett. Hmm. Now look here. Right here, the Rice Family Log Home original location. And the Rice Family Log Home present location. So they moved it. How? They couldn't have. It's too big. Here's how they done it, how they made the log cabin. Okay, let's go over here and look at this memorial plaque. And we'll read this memorial, this historical marker. There's sassafras here. There's sassafras. I recognize the leaves. All right. Joseph Rice Log Cabin. Joseph Redmond Rice from 1805 to 1866. He wasn't very old, only 61. 
cut timber, then his young wife really masters rice from 09 to 81. She lived longer than he did. Snaked the logs to a home site 16 miles southwest of here. 16 miles. The cabin they built was a noted race station on the San Antonio Road. They brought up nine children, enlarging their cabin several times. After a grandson built a frame home in 1919, the old cabin became a farm storage shed. The Texas Centennial Commission in 1936 marked its history, and 1973 it was given to the state of Texas and moved here for restoration and ex exhibition. So they did move the home. Remarkable. All right, guys, that pretty well makes it for this video, and I hope that you all enjoyed. You all have a great day.